Hello Can fans, uh, my name is Ken Tyndall and I'm here today to demonstrate the PulseView user interface to SIGROC compatible logic analyzers uh, and the CAN2 protocol decoder uh, for the SIGROC uh, devices. So I've got a very, very simple setup here. This is uh, PulseView. Over here on the right, I have a CAN uh, bus analyzer. That's the Busmaster bus analyzer connected to a very simple little CAN bus on my desktop. Uh, and then down here, I have a window that's uh, logged in remotely to a Raspberry Pi, uh, and that's connected uh, to the CAN bus using uh, the SKPang uh, Pi CAN, uh, CAN hat for Raspberry Pi. And then over here, I have a little window logged into the Raspberry Pi Pico, uh, and that's uh, connected uh, up to a CAN transceiver. Uh, with an IO pin, uh, and that's running the uh, MicroPython uh, CanHack firmware um, that I published uh, recently uh, that lets us mount uh, attacks on the CAN bus, which we'll see in a moment. Okay, so let's set up PulseView. Firstly, this uh, starts in the, uh, with the demo device normally. Um, there are logic analyzers that uh, uh, work with this. Uh, you can get for, for just $10, but I have got uh, the Slayer Logic 16 on my bench, wired up uh, to everything. Now, there are 16 channels on the Logic 16, and we don't need anything except CanRx. So if we switch off all those except Can. RX, which is connected to pin zero of the logic analyzer, and the RX pin and the transceiver. So if I rename that uh, CAN RX, and then we need uh, to connect up uh, the decoder. So if we click on that, we get a list of decoders, and we want the CAN2 decoder. Okay. So we can just check that's connected up properly. So that's connected to CanRx. It's at 500 kilobits and 75% uh, sample point. So what we need to do is to select a falling edge, which will trigger the logic analyzer when it sees a falling edge. But uh, we need to set a pre-trigger uh, on here because uh, we need some idle time before the start of frame uh, falling edge. Otherwise, the protocol decoder waits to the next falling edge after some idle time. And if we're only going to send a frame, we need and we want to capture that frame, we need some idle time to look at. So if we just pick 20% uh, of our buffer. Now, 500 kilohertz is not enough to sample uh, CAN. So if we bump that to, let's say, 20 megahertz, and we use the tooltip here, will tell us that's a 50 millisecond uh, sample buffer. Uh, that's way, 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 way too much. CAN uh, takes at this speed uh, for a full-size CAN frame about a quarter of a millisecond. So we are well over, let's say, 50k samples. So that's a three millisecond time. That'll give us a, a good overview and everything will run nice and fast. So let's arm the logic analyzer. Let's go to the Raspberry Pi and use the uh, can tools with the can send command to send a can ID frame one, two, three with four bytes of data. And let's see what we find. Okay, so over here on the bus analyzer, we see one, two, three and the four bytes. And we can zoom in, 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 in. And here we have uh, the can frame. So this first line of the decoder is showing all the individual bits. And in fact, we can zoom in and get their bit values. Uh, and then these purple ones here are stuff bits. Then the next line down is the uh, individual CAN uh, fields of a CAN frame. So start of frame, okay, blue there, then the ID, the 11 bit ID, the RTR flag, the ID flag, and, and so on. Uh, the data field. The next line uh, after that is uh, basically we uh, this this ID here is is 11 bits because it's a standard ID frame. But if this is an 11 
plus 18 bit frame 29 bit frame it'll display this is a 29 bit number rather than having us having to to work out uh, how a and uh, b add together uh, and we show the individual bytes of the payload so this is like a standardized view of uh, how can would look with 29 bits and uh, four bytes uh, then the last line is the info line and here we have two types of info things we expect to see and things that we don't expect to see uh, so we have info and and uh, we'll see in a minute we have warning signs uh, so we normally get a pair of these little uh, indicators here received okay is if we zoom in we can see on the CAN protocol received OK is the second to last bit of the end of frame field and transmitted OK is the last bit at the end of frame field um, and then we get into frame space and then idle time so that's the anatomy of a CAN frame as the decoder is showing but uh, we can also do some other things and see things that we wouldn't see uh, otherwise so if we go to this here I've set this up to attack what's called the freeze doom loop attack uh, and we'll see how that works so if we run on the logic analyzer on the attack send the frame and this frame is being attacked with a freeze doom loop so here is the can frame as normal that we saw with all the fields here it's received okay it's transmitted okay but now there's a warning that this is an overload flag uh, and an overload uh, flag is a, a, a legacy part of the CAN protocol that uh, comes from the very earliest times where controllers couldn't keep up uh, necessarily so they could issue a, like a flow control uh, stalling uh, flag so it's a like just like an error flag but it's for um, overloading saying the controllers overloaded so it, it uh, spits out an error flag and then waits for this uh, uh, delimiter again and then normally you get the interface base and then everyone carries on transmitting no modern can controller generates uh, an overload frame because they're all fast enough now so to see one of these is is odd you could see, I suppose see some bus noise here or something that triggered this but this is a very odd uh, thing to see all of them in a row like this is basically it's a sign uh, that the can bus is being attacked uh, and because this happens after the uh, frame was both received and transmitted okay at the both ends of the uh, the transmit and the receive uh, it's come up in the uh, in the bus analyzer view here but down on the wire we see these overload frames and they're kind of invisible at the uh, the frame level but the bus here because of the attack this shouldn't happen once it certainly shouldn't happen 10 times in a row so because we asked for it to happen 10 times in a row we have sucked out of the bus two frames worth of bus bandwidth um, and we could do this uh, this attack uh, for as long as we like so we could freeze the bus for half a second if we wanted uh, so the protocol view of down at the bit level from a logic analyzer is showing us uh, what's going on at a level that we simply couldn't see uh, with a bus analyzer there's nothing going on here but down here we can see that the uh, the bus bandwidth is being taken up uh, by an attack on the bus so when things start to go crazy the deadlines are missed because frames don't get there on time and there are timeouts we can see what's actually going on the bus rather than what appears to be going on the bus from this higher level view so that's one of the uses of uh, this protocol decoder it can can spot uh, interesting things happening odd things happening uh, right down at the lowest level of the protocol uh, so that's how we use pulse view um, to decode some interesting stuff that's going on in CAN. Thanks for watching uh, and I'll see you soon.